In this video, I will be talking about nucleation and crystal growth. Nucleation, which results in a crystal, is a liquid, vapor, or solution to solid phase transition. The resulting crystal can grow in various ways, for example through a liquid that freezes on the surface of the crystal or deposition, which is a gas-solid phase transition. A few examples of this are the growth of calcite, minerals and pyrite crystals. A pyrite crystal is shown here on the screen. The formation of a snowflake is a very good example of nucleation and crystal growth combined. A snowflake starts out with nucleation, where a water droplet nucleates and grows into a snowflake. This is a special example of crystal growth, because water vapor crystallizes directly via the process of deposition. I will talk more about this example later. Nucleation can occur in two different ways, namely homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation. Homogeneous nucleation occurs when a pure liquid nucleates because it has been cooled sufficiently. Surprisingly enough, sufficiently cooled does not mean the freezing temperature of the pure liquid. Depending on the liquid, it needs to be cooled down a certain amount further. For example, homogeneous nucleation of water occurs with a chance of 99.9% at about minus 35 to minus 43 degrees Celsius, depending on the size of the water droplet. But it has a very low chance of freezing at minus 10 degrees Celsius. But if water is not pure, it can, with a high probability, also nucleate at minus 10 degrees Celsius. This is because of dust particles in the water, allowing it to nucleate at a higher temperature. This process is called heterogeneous nucleation. The process of crystal growth is driven by a degree of supercooling. This is necessary because the nucleation barrier needs to be lowered by means of thermal fluctuations. So the higher the degree of supercooling is, the bigger the thermal fluctuations are. There are two major growth mechanisms, non-uniform lateral growth and uniform normal growth. Non-uniform lateral growth advances in steps, while the uniform normal growth advances in a continuous way. The main criterion which decides between the two growth mechanisms is the diffusivity of the surface. A diffuse surface changes from one phase to another in a continuous way and thus allows for uniform normal growth across the crystal. Alternatively, a sharp surface for which a major change property is discontinuous leads to non-uniform lateral growth. Even when the supercooling is active, the surface will reach a metastable equilibrium between steps, which it does not in the case of uniform normal growth. In order for a snowflake to form, a supercooled water droplet must first nucleate to form an ice crystal. This can happen in two ways, either through homogeneous or heterogeneous nucleation. In order for a crystal to form through homogeneous nucleation, the temperature must be minus 35 degrees Celsius or lower. So in most cases, it's unlikely a snowflake forms in this way, since the temperature in a cloud is usually not this low. So snowflakes mostly form via heterogeneous nucleation, meaning a dust particle is needed inside a droplet of water in order for it to nucleate. Because of the dust particle, the temperature needed for the water droplet to nucleate becomes higher, namely minus 6 degrees. Once the droplet has nucleated and thus an ice crystal has formed, it starts to grow because of the deposition of water vapor on the surface of the ice crystal. Water molecules from the water vapor align themselves in a certain way in the ice crystal, namely in a way which maximizes attractive forces and minimizes repulsion. This causes the hexagonal shape of the snowflake. The growth of an ice crystal after nucleation takes about half an hour, after which the ice crystal is heavy enough to fall out of the cloud and become a snowflake. Now for the theoretical explanation of homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation. When a drop of size r is nucleated, this leads to a change in free energy as seen here. The first part is the negative contribution proportional to the volume of the droplet, because the mixture is initially unstable. The second part is the positive contribution proportional to the surface area because an interface needs to be made with interfacial energy. There is a certain value r star for which droplets above this radius are stable and below are unstable. This means that the energy required to form a critical nucleus is shown at the bottom left, and the occurrence probability of this activation process is shown on the bottom right. This is basically the method of argumentation that can be used to describe homogeneous nucleation. Heterogeneous nucleation is a bit more complicated. If a surface of a different solid is present, it lowers the activation energy for nucleation. A crystal nucleus nucleates against the solid with a certain angle, and this contact angle depends on the tensions between the catalyst and solid, catalyst and liquid, and liquid and solid. 
We now find a similar change in free energy, but with different energy contributions because of the interface, described by this formula. If the contact angle is less than 90 degrees, this seriously decreases the degree of undercooling that is necessary.